bless the Lord with all of my soul and everything that is within me. We bless his holy name. For the Lord, he is good and he is merciful. He is kind and he is an awesome God. Listen, welcome to Impact Church Goldsboro. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship word fellowship. And we are so honored and we're thankful. Listen, we are, I believe, we're in the best days of our life, contrary to what we may see, contrary to what we may hear and what's going on. And so we want you to pull up a chair, take a seat, get to the table, wherever you are in your home, wherever you are, basically just join in, get your God pads. We're going to culminate and close out a powerful series of teaching that we've been doing over the past month and the past uh, actually three to four weeks we've been just a little over a month talking about repentance God is calling his people calling his church he's calling us to a place of repentance to return unto him and watch God restore watch him renew so we are honored we thank you for joining us we invite you to make this uh, uh, something that you gift to a friend and to a loved one by sharing it just gift it to them send them a text and tell them I'm getting ready to send you a particular if you will live broadcast where I know you will be blessed so share this share it with your friends share it with someone that you know need the word of the Lord and uh, we're believing God that God is going to speak profoundly to you so just enjoy and, and, and receive more than enjoy receive don't just enjoy but receive come in agreement with the word of the Lord listen we're going to open up with a quick word of prayer and we're going to dive right in because we have some things that we just simply want to culminate and we know that the spirit of worship is not only here but it is in your house it is in your space it is in your heart and so this morning father we worship you we thank you we glorify you we magnify you we lift you we thank you for allowing your presence and allowing your anointing to be with us this morning we thank you that you are here and that you are in us and you are working through us we thank you that you're on thy present not only are you here but you are there and you are everywhere but we thank you for the manifestation of your presence we thank you that your presence will manifest and that the glory of God will be felt will be experienced we thank you that chains will be broken off of people's hearts off of people's minds we thank you God that there will be deliverances that will take place in the lives of your people who are listening today by way of the broadcast we release the anointing of God to destroy every yoke of bondage we pray to Today, that men will be saved we pray today that hearts will be convicted we pray today that the spirit of repentance will begin to just be released over the land and that men women boys girls people will begin to turn their hearts back to you now we decree and declare that you are God and besides you there is no other God we call you Yahweh our father Abba father and we glorify you we thank you we even lift up the name of Jesus Yeshua our our Lord, our Savior, the Son of the living God, we decree and declare openly and verbally that there is no other name whereby men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare today that the Lord Jesus be lifted high. We decree and declare today that our God is mighty, our God is strong, our God is awesome, and you are doing amazing things. We even thank you because we are here in this in this space and time for such a time as this and I believe that you are raising up men and women of God who will lift up your name and who will lift up your standard who will lift up your word and we shall see your glory in the earth and we thank you today in all things it's in Jesus name we pray and we decree and declare the word shall bless the people today the word shall heal the word shall deliver and we thank you for your word today we thank you for your word come on wherever you are out there in social media land just begin to give God praise come on give some hand clapping emojis if we were in church I would tell you to clap your hands and give God a wonderful praise come on give him a wonderful praise father we lift you today I lift it up father we lift you Father, we lift you. Father, we lift you. May your name be lifted high. May your name be lifted high, oh God. 
Hallelujah. We are so excited. We are so thankful. Listen, we invite you into the word of the Lord. We thank God for everything that he is doing and everything that he is going to do. We invite you to just join us. We appreciate uh, the fact that you're taking time out. So let's dive right into this. I have just been so excited teaching this message and I hope and pray that it has been a blessing. Well, again, we have been teaching on and from the subject of repentance and literally uh, just very prophetic. The Lord has been saying to us to repent and to turn our hearts back to him and to literally come back into that place where we're basically living our lives and living it for God, but we're putting him first and we have made him uh, the center of our heart, the center of our joy, the center of our lives once again. This morning, I want to go a little further and just sort of culminate some things. So if you would join me, if you would, in your Bibles, turn with me to the, uh, let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy. I want to read a particular verse of scripture uh, to start out with today to sort of lay a foundation and uh, give uh, some things and a little premise before we get into uh, the deeper part of uh, this particular message. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you have your Bibles and you should, we got them all everywhere now, right? We have them on our phones and we have them on everything. So turn in your Bibles to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, if you would. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And I'm going to read this particular verse of scripture, and then we're going to highlight a few things, and we'll move into uh, some of the greater, I guess you would say, points of this message. Again, we've been talking about repentance, and we are going to redefine it, but I want to sort of lay this premise, or a premise, this message, excuse me, uh, with this particular scripture. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse number, uh, let's start at verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. I believe that in this hour, uh, God is, again, calling, looking, searching for faithful men, men who are reliable, dependable, people who are reliable, dependable, individuals who are born again, and they're really sold out, and they are reliable and dependable and trusting God. He says, again, in verse number two of Second Timothy chapter two, and the, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse three, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And here in verse three, we see as uh, we look at this text that literally uh, verse three is encouraging uh, the believers that we are to endure hardness. And we know that we're in some very unique times right now. We're in some unique times in that it seems and appears that, you know, it's like something on every turn, right? Every time you uh, turn on the television, every time you basically go on social media, every time you uh, watch the news, whatever the case may be, we're hearing and seeing so many things that give the impression that we're in some very, very unique times. And we know that we are. Many will say that we're in the last days and many will say that we're in perilous times and you know it's hard to doubt that it's hard to even debate that but one of the things that I see here in the word of the Lord that I want you to understand as believers one that we are to endure hardness as a good soldier so how you go through these times how you deal with what you're seeing how you deal with what is going on around you how you literally uh, handle all of the negative news how you handle all of the things that you see from the COVID-19 virus uh, that has basically killed so many people, right? All of these negative things, all of these things that seem to be so dreary and so, uh, if you will, depressing to many, if not most, uh, the believer who is also a soldier of Jesus Christ. And that's important because we have to understand that as believers, we're not just, quote unquote, saved to just have a good time, to have a good life. And God has promised us this. He has blessed us. He has promised to prosper for us. But one of the things that we must continue to reiterate to the body of Christ is the fact that you are a soldier, that you have been called to serve in the army of the Lord. And I believe one of the things that we are hearing the, uh, the call to repentance is not just to repent and say that I'm saved again, but to also come into the proper understanding of the totality of what you've been called to. You've not just
just been called and you're not just been called to be saved. You're not just been called to be, if you will, saved and miss hell or to basically go to heaven. But we have an assignment in the earth. We have something that God has predestined for us to do, something that God has predestined to be done in the earth. And it is imperative that we understand that we are soldiers, that we are soldiers. Now, this is extremely important because literally he tells us to endure hardness as a good soldier. So how you endure difficult times, difficult days, how you endure the times that we're in like now uh, with all of these negative things going on, how you endure it and the way you conduct and carry yourself literally determines whether or not you are a good soldier. Obviously, if there's a good soldier, then there's a bad soldier. And I believe it's obvious that the bad soldier would be one who is not enduring hardness uh, the way that the Bible teaches us that we are to count it all joy when we fall into divers, many different types of temptations, and when we find ourselves tested and tried on many different, if you will, levels. It is imperative for the believer to understand that in order for us to be a good soldier in the army of the Lord and to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ to carry out his mission, his will, his purpose in the earth. What does the Bible say in Matthew chapter 6? That we are to uh, pray that, that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven, which says to us there is an assignment that we as kingdom soldiers, kingdom soldiers in the army of the Lord, kingdom citizens even, we literally have a responsibility to make sure that we are focused and that we are engaged in kingdom, if you will, uh, work kingdom principles, kingdom concepts, and not getting entangled with this world. Let's keep going. Thou therefore, in verse 3, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. It says, no soldier when in service gets entangled in the enterprises of civilian life. His aim, get this, his aim is to satisfy and to please the one who enlisted him. So our, our entire lives should be about literally satisfying God and making certain that we are uh, seeking to please him in all that he has commanded and called us to in this life. And so it goes on to say, no man that warreth in verse 4, no man that warreth in verse 4 entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier and I read it in the Amplified it says no soldier in service when in service gets entangled in the enterprises of civilian life and his aim where is your aim today what are you aiming for are you really aiming see when you're talking about aim you're also talking about seeking and we talked about in Matthew 6 and 33 that we are to put our priorities in place and seek the Lord or seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so he's telling us here in this text that literally we are to aim to satisfy, to please God, to live for God. I believe even in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the Bible talks about the entire duty of man is to literally obey, to uh, really obey and to uh, uh, walk in obedience to God. And it's imperative that we begin to shift our thinking. Now the whole message of repentance is about changing the way you think. When you deal with the word repent, the word repentance and repent, it literally means to, to, to turn away from uh, sin, to turn away from Satan, and to turn away from the world's concepts, the world's ways, the way the world does things, the way the world do things. It literally means to shift your thinking. You will never serve God God properly if you do not develop the right mindset. This is why the scripture says in Philippians that we are to take the mind of Christ because if we're going to serve him, if we're going to serve him the way he has called us to serve him, and that is to be in a place of just submission to his will, to his way, to his word, literally we have to have his mindset. And so what happens is that literally when people get entangled with the affairs of this world, this life, is as if a soldier who has been sent overseas by this country go over.
over into Afghanistan and while in Afghanistan as an American citizen and an American soldier who's been sent by the United States, if you will, military, if that particular soldier gets over into that foreign country and then begins to adapt to uh, the culture that he's been sent into and, and literally gets entangled with the affairs and start literally living a life uh, that is basically a life that is uh, conducive to that particular country, Afghanistan we'll use as the example, and then fail to carry out his mission because he's so entangled. He goes over and even gets a, a job in, in the Afghan markets and he's already been employed by the United States Army. And you can see that particular, if you analogy, it doesn't make sense. Why would a U.S. soldier, a U.S. if you will, soldier go over to Afghanistan sent by his 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 uh, country to carry out uh, the mission of spreading democracy and etc which is one of the main purposes of of American if you will military to establish democracy around the world why would he go and get entangled with the everyday life of a country where you've been sent to do a work now you got to understand this is where the body of Christ has been this is where the church has been this is where people of God have really basically uh, have not been able to thread that line and know the difference between whether or not I'm living for God, I'm living a kingdom life, or am I just basically uh, uh, aware of the blessings of God and aware that God wants me to be blessed in this country, but I'm not from this, this world. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. We said it earlier this week in a post that even in this great country called America, we have people who have basically begin to uh, make even this nation uh, an idol. We idolize our country. We idolize our lifestyle. We talk about the American dream and so forth, but there is a kingdom, if you will, dream. There is a kingdom assignment. There is a kingdom focus that I believe God is calling us back to. And so what we have to do is we have to get free and delivered and we have to become, if you will, delivered so that we are no longer entangled. We are no longer, if you will, entangled with the affairs of this world. Now that's not teaching us to be negligent. It's not saying that you can't go to school or you can't do this or you can't do that. It's basically encouraging the believer to understand that you are a soldier, that your assignment in God and your assignment as a believer and as a born again believer is more important than anything that you could do or desire to do in this earth above anything you could do. What God has put you here to do is more important. Now, I'm going to give you a little test to help you basically assess where you are. If if we are to simply uh, walk as believers to glorify God and to lift up his name so that the world will know that he is God and that the, the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. How many of you have taken time uh, throughout the, the week to, to minister to people and to share and to tell your, your testimony and to lift up Jesus to invite people to Christ? If you ask the average believer, how many people have you invited to know Jesus in just the past week, you would find that it's astonishing that people don't even have uh, that on their mind. People have surviving on their mind. They have uh, trying to pay their bills and uh, literally we can sit on jobs and we can sit in uh, particular places of work and we can hear people talk about their sinful ways and we can hear people talk about even how, uh, how desperate they are in many different ways and many believers never even offer Jesus. Many believers never even open their mouth to share Jesus. I mean, we literally uh, know that the Bible teaches us we have the answer to all the world's problems in Christ Jesus, but yet we share uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as if he's some type of secret, right? As if he's a secret. And we got to stop making this thing a secret, and we got to get on our assignment, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus in the earth, to lift up and to glorify God in the earth, to establish 
establish his kingdom through every aspect of our life and living in our lifestyle, in our language, in, in, in our, uh, if you will, values, everything about us, we should basically be establishing our lives on the principles of God's word. And so the scripture says again in verse number four of 2 Timothy 2, it says, no man that warreth, and look at that, no man that warreth. We're actually in warfare. Hello, we're in warfare. We're in warfare. Everything that God has called you to do, you must understand. I don't care if he's giving you a business. I don't care if you, where you work. Everything about what you do at some point in time, you must understand that literally you are here to lift up the name of Jesus, to, to, to decree and declare the glory of God, to establish in the earth God's presence and God's glory in the earth. Literally everywhere you go and everywhere you find yourself, you give heaven access access to that particular place. You may be on a business deal or business trip. You may be doing a business appointment, but after you get finished doing the appointment of whatever it is that you're doing in that business, you should also understand that there's a higher appointment that you should basically know that somehow I need to uh, at least be a witness or tell this particular client or invite this client into a space where they too can have the privilege of knowing God. Now, you got to be wise. The Bible said a wise man wins souls. Wise man wins souls. When we deal with the repentance that God is talking about, when we deal with the fast that God is talking about, when we deal with the revival that God is talking about, we should see people's heart become more sensitive to reaching others who are lost and reaching those who do not know the Lord. We should become more sensitive to people who are hurting and dying and people who literally need to be saved and delivered. And everybody may not have the same, if you will, assignment to go about uh, uh, making the, these things happen. In other words, everybody's not evangelistic. Everybody's not going to be out there pounding the pavement trying to get people saved. But wherever you are, you should be in that space where at least you could plant a seed. You could either water a seed. At least you could be a light to the world. At least you could be a witness to somebody. But whatever it is, we must know, be conscious that God has called us to glorify him in the earth and not just to be blessed and to have this American prideful attitude that I'm blessed, I live good, I drive good, but yet we don't have an humble spirit and an humble heart to the point where we could be sensitive to what God is desirous of doing and that is to save, deliver, and free men from their sins as well as bring them into a better space of life and living in the earth. That's some good stuff right there. You ought to give me some hand emojis if I was in the house of the Lord. I'd tell you to clap right there. Or if you was in the house of the Lord, I'd tell you to clap. So let's look at this again and let's move now to Romans chapter 12. And so it says, don't get entangled. You're actually no man that warreth. And you got to remember you're in a warfare. You're in warfare. You're in warfare. This thing is a psychological, uh, uh, if you will, spiritual battle that the enemy has waged against God and literally God is calling his people back to a place of repentance he's bringing us back into a place where we understand our purpose our mission he's literally trying to help us understand that you're not just here to be blessed but you're here to be a blessing you're here to literally bring forth my will and purpose in the earth every one of you were born in your family to be born again to become a family, if you will, revivalist. You should literally be a family revivalist. Listen, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister, literally, uh, she took it upon herself and she made this mass text, if you will, thread with a lot of the family members and literally she every Saturday she sends out encouraging words and she sends out text messages encouraging the family asking people are are they okay and are they well and and asking if anybody needs help and she basically has taken upon herself to allow God to use her as a family a familial uh, a revivalist uh, a, a person who basically makes sure that our family and my wife 
wife's family and everybody that's on that thread know that there is somewhere where they can get prayer, somewhere where they can get help. Uh, literally, I've seen other family members or uh, and people that I haven't seen in a long time in the family responding. And yes, some it's annoying, right? To some, it, it, it's a nuisance that you get this constant texts that come through all day Saturday of uh, people saying, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, and before I allowed it to annoy me, I understood the kingdom purpose of that thing, right? And so sometimes we don't want to even do what God has called us to do because we don't want to annoy people. We don't want to appear to be the type of people who are quote unquote, you know, just prying in people's business trying to get them to be saved. Well, that's why you're here. We're here to, to bring people in into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and to give them the opportunity to escape the corruption of this world by coming into the kingdom of God. One of the things that many believers do not know how to do yet today Many born-again believers do not know how to exist in the kingdom of God while they are also currently in the world. They don't know how to escape where they are and to abide where they've been called to be. And that is because it's spiritual. Literally, you got to learn how to live in the kingdom. And it is a, it's a spiritual experience because the kingdom of God is spiritual. So what you got to do is understand that what you see, all of this negative stuff all of the negative things you hear literally you walk by faith and not by what you see and when you're walking by faith you understand that though I see that every day I turn on the television they keep reminding me that nearly 150,000 people passed away over the past three months from COVID and if you constantly uh, 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 focus on what you see and hear you will fall into depression but if you keep your mind stayed on him and if you keep your mind in a place where though I'm in this world I'm not of it and so I can elevate my thinking above all of the negative news, above all of the negative stuff that comes through social media. I can keep my mind above those things and I can dwell in a particular space where even though I see it and I'm not even being negligent to where I'm not being, if you will, uh, 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 if you will, I, I would say we still have to be responsible in what we see, but we also have to be equally if not more responsible for living above these worldly mindsets that's dictated through the media and dictated through all of the stuff that our eyes and our ears encounter and so we got to learn how to live in that space of the kingdom so that we can be free and be able to win those to Christ I'm here to tell you you cannot be on the verge of losing your mind and help somebody else keep theirs and we got to get delivered we got to get free you can't be on the verge of of going cuckoo for cocoa puffs and then think you're going to give somebody encouraging word I believe there needs to be more stability in the body of Christ that even though these things that we see they are heartbreaking they are they are literally depressing in some cases you can even say but we are good soldiers we know how to endure all of this hard stuff that we see and we can stay focused we can continue to stay true to the mission instead of complaining like the world does we can begin to invite the world into the kingdom where everything that is causing the world to lose their mind we have the testimony that we have a God who's given us peace and it's the peace of God that surpasses passive all understanding is literally the type of peace that is a surplus it it gives us so much peace that literally we cannot be overwhelmed by what we see the bible says in romans chapter 8 that if we walk after the spirit of god we'll have life and we'll have peace the body of christ should be in a place of life and peace we should be experiencing the blessings and the glory of god on all levels spiritually physically and financially we should not be uh, those who are without hope we should be the ones who are distributing hope we should be telling the world that our God is able to keep you even in the midst of this and here is the good news that listen we don't fear death why because for me to live is Christ and if I die the Bible teaches me that I gain come on here Paul said listen Paul was even in a place 
where he was okay. Listen, take me because to be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. So we're in a place where we have no fear, neither do we have, if you will, a, a, a space of, of, of thinking where we are without hope. We have hope. We should be the most encouraging people on our jobs, in our families, and we got to learn to uh, uh, really hold up our heads. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in so that you can be strengthened in the inner man and be a real light, a real witness to the world that our God is an awesome God. Our God is a saving, delivering, healing, blessing God, even in the midst of days like this. I refuse, I refuse to see the saints of God, amen, put their head down and be depressed because of what you see when the Bible tells you, tells us that we walk by faith. In other words, what did God say? It's not what you see. What did God say? And if you're focused on what you see, you're not in the faith. You're not walking by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is your ability to, to respond to the truth of God's word, to respond to the prophetic word that comes into your life, to respond to the plans and the will of God for your life, to respond to the written rhema word. Literally, your faith is your life response to God and his word at all times. Your faith enables you to respond to God despite what you see, despite what you see. And I will even go as far as to say and suggest that we're in a faith crisis. We have, we have many people who have religion, but they don't have faith. In other words, they are more affiliated with the name of a church and a particular denomination, if you will, but they do not have the ability to respond to God in obedience, even in difficult times. We are good soldiers in the Lord as we endure hardness. We are good soldiers, and we continue to stay focused on our mission and on our assignment. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. I hope this is helping somebody and literally when we talk about repentance this is what we're talking about. Coming back into this space. Coming back into this place where we have turned our hearts and our minds and our focus back to God. His will, his purpose, his ways, the things of God. God is going to restore the passion and the love for his word. The passion and the love for his, his church. The passion and the love for worship and, and for the things of God. He's going to literally bring back, if you will, a passion and a, a love for fasting, a passion and a love for meditation and so forth, because I believe he's about to do some amazing things in the body of Christ. Look at Romans chapter 12. Let's take a look at uh, verse one. Paul here says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable. This is your reasonable service is to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, understand that is to present your person a sacrifice, meaning you are a sacrifice. One of the things that God is doing through repentance is he's bringing people back to a place where they are willing to, to, to sacrifice for him once again. We have entered into a season with, with this modern in Western Americanized Christianity that if it's not easy, people are not willing to really go or do or serve God unless it's in, uh, if you will, alignment with what they want to do. It's, it's, if it's not easy. Now we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says that, listen, a good soldier endureth hardness. So let you know right there that as a believer, it's going to be some hard spaces that you find yourself in. You're going to be in some uh, uh, particular spaces where you're going to have to make hard decisions and living for God you must understand that there is a level of suffering that comes with your calling I, I, I'm intrigued by the number of anointed folk who basically don't even understand the principle of suffering as a 
kingdom believer. And, and literally the anointing of God is not being produced in a classroom. Talk to me here. See, we're in an information generation and everybody is, yes, we should be trained. We should be taught. But when God gets ready to anoint you, he's going to take you through some stuff and he's going to allow you to suffer some stuff. Talk to me, somebody. Jesus, he basically had to suffer. And so he even told his disciples when they were walking with him and said, can we, when you get into your glory, one said, can I sit on one side? And the other said, can I sit on the other side? And Jesus said, one, that's not for me to give you. That is for the father to assign. But he said, you're going to have your opportunity to share with me, but it's not going to be in this glorious seat where you just look uh, high and mighty and look pompous like you are important, which is what people want to do today. People want to look important. We have this need to be important, but what Jesus told his disciples in the gospel was that, listen, I'm going to offer you a cup, and it's the cup of suffering. You're going to have to suffer. You're going to suffer some things for me. The Bible even teaches us that we suffer for righteousness sake. When you live right, you're going to suffer in your flesh, meaning your carnal nature is going to act actually suffer because you're going to walk by the spirit after the truth of God's word and it's going to hurt ache pain your flesh pain your earth your earthly nature your fallen nature suffers when you walk in the righteousness of God oh yeah we don't preach these messages like this anymore do we but it's imperative because we are entering into a season where I believe God is about to pour fresh oil but he's poured it on those who have cup come on your cup runs over with what see we have translated that into a happy cup but the cup that Jesus offered it was literally a cup of suffering he said, you're going to have to learn how to go through some things. And if really, if you are going to walk in this apostolic grace and anointing, I'm going to train you through pain. God Almighty, God will train you through pain. But here is the thing. When you do not have a kingdom mindset, all you do is complain. Talk to me. When you don't think, if you will, with the kingdom mindset and mentality, which this is why repentance is so necessary because to repent is to change your thinking, to change your mind towards God, the ways of God, the principle of God's word, the concept of God's ways so that you will be able to comprehend and even understand God. Oh, I'm preaching good, right? And so we got to learn how to endure hardness. We have to learn how to suffer some things. And when I say suffer, I'm not talking about being broke. I'm not even talking about being sick. That's not what the scripture teaches us. What it means when you are suffering for righteousness sake, it means that your flesh, your human carnal nature, your earthly nature, your, your Adamite nature wants to do what it wants to do. But you got to break it. You got to humble your flesh. You got to bring your flesh under subjection and you got to say, I'm going to obey God at all costs. And it hurts your soul. It hurts your carnal fleshly nature to obey God. It hurts your, you know, it hurts your flesh when you got to love folk who can't stand you. You, you got to treat people right who dog you. You know that hurts your flesh. It hurts your ego. Your, your carnal nature begins to, to, to ache and, and even feel it's being done wrong when you have to bless them that curse you. I mean, they cursing you, but you blessing them. That, that goes against your nature. And so there is a, a natural, if you will, tendency in us to, to, to do wrong from the start. So when we got to do right when we're being done wrong, my God, it hurts your, your flesh. It causes you to be pain. And this is why Jesus said to his disciples that if you're going to come after me, you're going to have to take up your cross and you're going to have to bear that baby because there are going to be many days while you're on the journey of, 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 of God, you're going to have to take that cross that I told you to take up, put it down and get up on that baby. You're going to have to crucify your flesh. The cross represents death. It represents sacrifice. 
And this is what he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, we got to learn how to sacrifice. And here's what you got to understand. In the Bible, you will find that God did not give his people. He didn't give the Hebrew Israelites the liberty of bringing what they wanted to bring. You can't bring your own sacrifice. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And what we want to do is sacrifice what we want. But see, some of you, God is asking for hard stuff. And, and literally, you're holding up your anointing. You're holding up your assignment. You're holding up your blessings because God keeps asking for Isaac and you keep bringing him somebody else. God said, I didn't ask for that one. I want the one that you love. I want Isaac. And so God never gives us the liberty of bringing our own sacrifice. He commands, he instructs, and he gives what uh, type of sacrifice that he asks for. Throughout the scriptures, you will find it all the way through the Old Testament when they even had to bring a sacrifice to worship God. God always told them, bring me this, bring me that, bring a dove, bring this. But whatever you bring, do not bring a crippled, spotted, or a bad one. He always wanted the best of the best. And so what we got to do is give God the best of us. We got to give God the best of us. You gotta, we got to begin to make sacrifices so that God has access to our mind, access to our money, access to our time, access to our family. Come on. How, why would he spend his own blood to save us and to purchase us but then don't have access to us? And one reason that really he does not uh, just take access because he's a God who honors our will. This is why he said you got to lay down your will. They that come after me must be willing and obedient. God ain't going to make you do nothing, but he will also uh, help you understand that it is better to obey than to sacrifice. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. So we must understand that we must present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable. Holy is a word that means belonging to God. It belongs to God. Holiness is not so much as uh, uh, how you dress or how, what you look like, who you belong to. That's what being holy is all about. When you're holy, that means you belong to the Lord. And the only reason you're holy is because you're God's. Listen, the tithe is holy, not because it's a special a dime out of a dollar. It's holy because it is dedicated and it is consecrated to God. The church needs to be reconsecrated. Oh, we don't even use this language anymore. Oh, my God. We need to be consecrated. We need to go on a consecration and we need to sanctify ourselves unto the Lord all over again. We need to recommit ourselves to God and, and, and dedicate our hearts back to him through repentance. Repentance is the doorway to all of what we're teaching right now. In order for us to be holy, we got to shift in our thinking. We got to repent and we got to bring our heart and our mind back into a place where we are sensitive to the will and the word and the voice of God once again. So let's read Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. I love it because here he's continuing to show us in the scripture that you ain't going to do this any kind of way. You just can't tell God uh, what to receive. And we tend to think God receives whatever we offer. If you study the scripture, there were many times when God literally uh, rebuked Israel because they brought him offerings and sacrifices that was not up to his standard. And so you got to understand that you just can't do what you want and tell God to be happy with it. At least I'm giving you this. At least I pray at night. At least I read my Bible once a week. At least I tell somebody about you whenever I think about it. No, what you got to do is you got to humble yourself and surrender yourself and begin to think and to uh, get that holy mindset. See, holy mentality and mindset. When you're holy, you understand you belong to God. Nobody has to tell you. When you are holy, you understand I'm God's. I belong to God. I serve God. I belong to God. I'm dedicated to God. And therefore, I shall be faithful to God even unto 
death. I will be faithful unto God. We have literally rewritten holiness, righteousness, and we have, as the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, we have gone about establishing our own righteousness, but literally we're doing it out of ignorance. We establish our own righteousness, and basically it's not the righteousness of God. And so you can't rewrite uh, God's if you will, standards and ways that fit you and make you comfortable. Literally, you got to understand that there is something that is acceptable unto God. And if there is an acceptable, then there got to be and there has to be something that is unacceptable. And we have to understand that God is not accepting everything. There was a particular verse in the Bible where literally God says, away with your assemblies, away with your, uh, your, your services. Uh, away put your hands down you got your hands lifted you're doing all this but yet he was telling them your heart is far from me you all have gotten if you will commit it to if you will the routine of worship but now I'm calling you back to a place where your heart is sensitive to me I believe that God allowed church to be interrupted so that he could refocus you and understand that he doesn't just simply want you to show up on Sunday and be all dead and worship and praise and enjoy singing but then Monday through Saturday it's a difficulty trying to get your attention the Holy Spirit tries to speak to you but there is no if you will sensitivity to God outside of church service and God is restoring church he's restoring his house but he wants you to have your focus right he wants you to understand that you come to church to be developed but you leave church the work of the Lord come Ephesians chapter number four. You don't come to church to have church. You are the church. You come to church to be developed. Ephesians four says he called and he has grace, if you will, fivefold ministry for the developing, for the cultivating and the equipping of the saints. And then he says so that the saints can do the work of the ministry. You come to church to be developed, to be cultivated, to literally learn how to think. Think and operate in a kingdom mindset and to understand your purpose and assignment beyond what you do in the church doors or the church house so that when you leave church, you're ready to do the work of the ministry. You ought to give some hand emojis right there. That's good stuff right there. I bless you, Father. Let's finish this out this morning. So I'm going to get even into some of the things that you need to understand as it relates to repenting and repentance. But literally, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he tells us to present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, meaning not just any kind of way, not just any kind of way, not just any kind of way. Your body belongs to God. You can't even do what you want with it. Your body belongs to God. You can't even do what you want with it. Come on, somebody. You can't do what you want with it. And he says to us, it says, this is our reasonable service. This is nothing that is uh, too strenuous. This don't make you deep. Come on, you ain't deep because you do that. That's what you're supposed to do. That is common. That's common. That's common. That's a, a very common thing in the body of Christ. Verse 2 goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world. Where I want to just really hit for a moment because this is what's happened. We've gotten entangled with the world. He tells us don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. He says literally, uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies living sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This goes to repentance also. You are repentant, you are shifting in how you think. You shift in your thinking, which when your thinking shifts, your perception shifts. When you think in accordance to God, his word, his ways, you see things, you see people differently. You don't see people the same. And if you if you are not thinking in a line with the, the, the mind of Christ, you will never see things from a godly kingdom perspective. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. So look at this before we get to the next phrase there. The renewing of the mind is the key to being able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You will not be able to prove what's good. You will not be able to uh, 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 approve, accept, know the perfect will of God if you do not repent. 
repent, shift in your thinking. We have looked at repentance over the years uh, as just saying, God, I'm sorry. But literally, in order for you to repent, you have to apply yourself to really daily working on changing, renewing your mind. And you will never renew your mind if you're not in the word of God. Today, the reason why we don't have uh, the level of anointing and grace, I think, in the body of Christ as we should. See, there should not be two or three people that's anointed. The entire body should be Listen, the Bible didn't tell preachers to just cast out devils. The Bible says to them that believe you shall have power. The word power, dunamis, authority, ability to command demons and demons. You should not have to call nobody to get a devil out of your own house. You should understand that you are anointed and you have authority. You have been given power and you should be trained. This is why you go to church. We train you to do what you are supposed to do in your own home and you can command demons and devils and you do not need a title to do that the bible doesn't say apostles can command and prophets can command literally if you are a believer's grace you can command demons and devils but you cannot have or walk in this kind of power if you're not in the word of God you got to get in your word you got to study the word to show yourself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth and properly operating in the spirit able to basically do what God has commanded you to do you can you can literally lay hands on your own children if they're not well and you know where is that you know it's amazing because there was a season where folk used to uh, really come at the church you know literally would say you know wow y'all ain't laying hands on the sick and they're not recovering and then all of a sudden COVID came and folk forgot about the power to lay hands on the sick oh y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me right and so I understand a level of wisdom but we are the people of God we should be operating in signs wonders and miracles this should be the season of true apostles showing forth the wonders of God, the miracles of God. And we got to come out of that fear. I command fear to come off the body of Christ. We have just conformed to what CNN said. We have conformed to what Fox News said. We basically say whatever the world says. And we basically shut our churches down, ran and hid because something was out there uh, taking people out. And, and literally, I'm not teaching you to be foolish, to be a snake handler, to be, if you will, a COVID searcher and so see if you can survive. That's not my uh, intent, but my intent is to say we are not supposed to stick our head between our legs and go and hide. We are not supposed to wag our tail like a little weak dog and go somewhere and hide. We're supposed to rise up and show the earth that our God is the God of healing and power. He raises folk from the dead and therefore we should be the type of people that saying, listen, God, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. But we will not bow in fear. I command the church to come out of fear. Walk in wisdom, but don't walk in fear. Woo. And then after all is over, we're going to be ready to lay hands on everybody. Tell me you got power. Don't touch me. You couldn't, you ain't had no power. You ain't have power to come out of the house. Go, go home. Don't touch me. Oh, Lord, I done gone into a different vein. And after everything's over, and ain't, look, look, everybody got powered in. Yeah, you got power now because COVID is gone. You done took a shot. You got a, a, a vaccine. Hello. And again, I'm not teaching you to be ignorant, nor am I teaching you to be naive. I'm teaching you not to fear. Because some of you are going to realize as soon as we uh, choose the next president, uh, everything going to get a whole lot better. Watch. I'm going to leave that alone because y'all ain't ready for that one. Y'all ain't ready for that one. CNN and, and uh, uh, who is it? Uh, all of those, those CNN commentators have become your prophets. You don't even hear the prophets anymore. Come on. Anderson Cooper's a prophet. We, 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 we turn it on the TV listening to television prophets, right? Yeah. And God's saying to listen, I've called my people to operate in a level of wisdom, yes, but yet we have not uh, operated in a level of power that I believe God wants us to operate in. So we got to repent. Let's close this out. I don't go into a different vein. I hope, hope the saints praying for me. Y'all don't, don't, don't me out. 
Don't tune me out. And that's another one of our problems. We don't go into this soft, cute preaching, and, 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 and we're not being developed. When you cultivate and, and, and train soldiers, you don't, you don't play with them. Talk to me, somebody. And today, uh, this, 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 this mental, if you will, weakness that people walk in, they're so sensitive, easily hurt, and that's because they've been listening to everything else, too. They, they done told you if, you if you talk loud to your child, you, 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 you're doing something to their psyche. You better tell that boy to sit down and get somewhere and sit down before he get his head knocked off. See, if you talk like that now, now you're going to jail, right? And now people got mental problems because they have not been developed. No fortitude. They have no fortitude. Everything now the world has declared to be wrong. And we've spared the rod and we've done everything now to put everything away. Don't talk to them like that. Don't talk hard. If you preach too hard, ain't nobody coming back to your church. And if you, oh, you shouldn't say that. Folk ain't going to want to be in here. Don't use that term. If you keep saying deliverance, folk ain't going to want to come to your church because they don't understand deliverance. Well, let's teach them what deliverance is. We ain't going to change the term because they don't understand it and because it sounds too apostolic and now you got folk who can't even i'm talking about they can't take anything if you talk loud to them their feelings are everybody's wounded everybody walk around wounded and supposed to have all of this anointing and listen if we so anointed why are we so offended at everything you ought to be able to take and receive somebody that's giving you good godly critique somebody that rebukes you and literally that's why we ain't growing because you can't grow without rebuke Rebuke is what helps you grow. If you're not being corrected, you're not growing. Because we become so sensitive, you can't correct folk. They'll pack up their little $2 tithe and they'll go somewhere else. Come on here, they two churches on every corner now, not one, two. And so they got all kinds of churches to choose from. But God is raising up, I believe apostolic voices a prophetic people who is literally going to condition the church when you look at uh, basic training of a soldier when you look at people who go in the military they go to basic training they do not basically sit there and, and, and take them through classes and just that they literally train and condition them and simulate the difficulties that they may encounter when they go into battles when they go into war and the church is struggling now with warfare because we have become weak by the American, if you will, uh, I think ideology that literally you can't be too loud, can't be too hard, don't preach, too, no, don't say that, don't challenge that. Uh, and so people have basically become softened and weakened in their in their soul and now they can't handle a basic demon talk to me here they can't handle a basic demon we should be able to deal with principalic powers understand the devil is trying to get you to lose your mind but you ought to say my mind is in him and he is in me and I can't lose my mind because I keep my mind stayed on him and not only as my mind stayed on him but he is keeping me in perfect peace God almighty I feel that in my soul I got to stop my time is just about out but understand we got to repent we got to repent and be renewed in our mind get back in the word get back in the word do not just wait to hear what the preacher's preaching study your word read your word begin to pray and then when you hear the preached word God will confirm and reveal stuff we have have lazy believers people who won't get in the word will sit and watch tv for hours but will not open their word if they open the bible and read for 10 minutes they sleepy it's a sleepy demon it's a spirit of sleep and slumber that wants to keep you out of the bible you gotta get in your word just like you study to get out of that class just like you study to get out of school you gotta study to get through life you gotta get in the word find out what god's word says every situation that you're dealing with find out what God's word has to say about how you're supposed to be a husband how you're supposed to be a wife find out how God's word teach and train you how to handle your money find out what God's word says about you and stop listening to your mom and your dad who never got saved and they told you you would never be nothing never do nothing God called and created you your mama was just a vehicle to get you here and put your affection on the things that are above and not beneath do not allow your entire identity to be wrapped up in your earthly pedigree your earthly heritage you are more than that you are a son of God I am not just a newsome but I'm a son of God and my sonship in God is my if you will earthly pedigree my earthly heritage I 
honor and appreciate it, but I don't live by it. I don't live by it. I don't live by it. I live by the blood of Jesus. I live by the blood of Jesus. Jesus that have washed me and cleansed me and have made me new. I am a son of God and the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am his son. I am his son. And if you have not his spirit, the Bible says that you're none of his. You're none of his. And you will know them because they will have love one for another. Jesus said, you'll know my children. They'll love each other. They won't dog each other out. They won't criticize each other. They won't sit and gossip about about each other but they will literally love one another cover one another and I'm telling you God's getting ready to reveal to some of you some of you have been basically in fellowship with folk who, who've been calling themselves Christians and they're nothing but demonic people they're nothing but people who have allowed demons to control them and just because they call themselves Christian don't mean they Christian they are not bit more saved if they ain't got the Holy Ghost we don't even test people like that anymore we don't even challenge folk you ask them do they have the Holy Spirit they'll tell you I don't even believe in the Spirit of God Talk to me somebody but listen I only want to deal with folk who got the Holy Ghost. I don't want no uh, uh, counselor who don't have the Holy Spirit. I, want, I even want my doctor to have the Holy Ghost. Come on somebody. I want my therapist to have the Holy Ghost. I want my mechanic to have the Holy Ghost. I want everybody that I associate with, if possible, to have the Spirit of God. You all ought to give God a praise. I got to get out of this message. So repentance is a determined turning away from sin, Satan, and the world. It's literally shifting your mind, putting your mind, your heart. Jesus said your lips are saying one thing, but your heart is so far from me. And what God is saying, repent. Bring your heart in alignment with mine. Bring your heart. Bring your heart. Bring your the totality. Serve me with all of your mind, your soul, all of your mind, your will, your soul, everything about you serve me. So it's a determining turning and, 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 and bringing your mind in alignment with God's word. The Bible says in Amos 3, one must hate all evil in his life and fall out agreement with that evil to walk with God. You got to begin to hate everything that is in, if you will, direct violation to God and his word. And to repent and we live in a nation that does not honor God, literally a nation that will literally legalize all types of abominations and, and, and endorse all types of sinful things and ideologies. And literally, we got to remain free uh, as we uh, continue to do the work and the will of God so that we don't get entangled and begin to be conformed to this world, to be conformed to this world. Literally, even in this political season, you got to begin to pray and do warfare and ask God to give you wisdom and give you understanding and discernment so that you can align yourself with candidates who are not been, if you will, in alignment and who are not in alignment with hell. You got candidates that principalities, Literally, principalities uh, love to align themselves with people who are going into politics so that they can begin to establish their, the principalic powers want to establish their agenda through policies and procedures. And we got to begin to pray and ask God. And I'm going to give you a, a, a word that's going to help you. And they're not all, all of these folk who align with hell are not all Republicans. You got some Democrats that's straight from hell. You ain't got to say amen. And some of you basically, if, if, if you could vote Democrat uh, all the way to heaven, you would. You don't have a bit more discernment to know that some of these folk are in alignment with hell. I don't care if it's your favorite politician either. I don't care. You need to get a prayer life. Get a prayer life. And that doesn't mean don't vote because ain't none of them no good. No, we're going to have to vote for somebody. So we're going to go down and pick the Holy Spirit, get the one who has the least demons and let me cast them out. And, and prayerfully, we can pray for them and keep them covered. And I found that if we learn how to do warfare and stop talking about politicians and dogging them and start dealing with the prince powers that's controlling them, you will find that some of them will come into uh, a better judgment when we deal with the atmosphere of the, of, of the spirit that's controlling them. That's controlling them. Woo. Help me, Holy Spirit. And so you, you, you can't walk with God and Satan. You can't be entangled with the world 
and walk with God. You got to get uh, free and delivered and you got to come into a place and into a space where you are free from all of those things. And as we close, you got to break up the fallow ground. You got to break up the fallow ground. The Bible says in Hosea 10, verse 12 and 13, sow for yourself righteousness and reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. Now, this is important. Literally, uh, when you're talking about breaking up the fallow ground, fallow ground, once it's plowed, it becomes, if you will, conducive to receive seed once again. And so as we repent, because what happens is we get hard, callous, and, and we become, if you will, cold and hard, and it makes it difficult to, to receive the seed of the word of God. So we got to break up the fallow ground, and, and, and once plowed, but 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 broken up literally now the seed of the word can germinate and begin to take root and bring forth fruit that shall remain for the glory of God so he says in again Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 and 13 break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord so in order for us to start seeking him again we got to break up some stuff we got to deal with some stuff and people don't like when you have to break up fallow ground this is why he's calling I believe the voice of the apostles are coming back to the pool pulpit uh, in this season because when you break up something that's hard you got to have something hard and sharp and you got to have something that's able to dig and break into that 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 ground that has become so difficult and hard now and so literally when you uh, know anything if you know anything about farming when you break it up fallow ground this is why most of those discs they have those sharp pointed edges and they are made of steel and they go into that dirt and they dig and so God's getting ready to send words that's going to dig into your life I'm prophesying some of you basically are going to hear words and messages that's going to go into areas where you thought you had covered God Almighty you thought you had covered you thought you had that thing hid but God says I'm getting ready to break up fallow ground I'm getting ready to tear up the ground that has been basically hard and is callous and is not not conducive for what I want to do I'm going to plow it I'm going to plow it I'm going to dig it up plow it and I'm going to make the land conducive so he said, break up your fellow ground for it's time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Boy, have we eaten the fruit of lies. And literally because you trusted in your own way in the multitude of your mighty men. In other words, here Hosea had to prophesy to a nation, to the nation of Israel actually. And and though they were God's chosen people, the nation was in a sad spiritual state. The nation was in moral decline. And for years, they had enjoyed the blessings of God, the material bountiful blessings. They enjoyed military strength. They enjoyed uh, peaceful relations all around the nation. But yet, they still turn away from God. Sounds like somewhere we know. Don't it sounds like America. They stop viewing God as the source of their blessings. And then they basically begin begin to rise in pride as if their intelligence were doing what, what God was actually doing. They put off worshiping God. They cease from loving him and they begin to place idols and, and, and other things and worldly things before them and they begin to pursue worldly things and they left Yahweh and God basically began to step in and say listen uh, preach and prophesy to this people and tell them to break up the fallow ground deal with their heart and turn back to me least I begin to bring judgment on this land and so God is calling us to repentance and I believe the church needs to repent and the church needs to turn our heart back to God so that we can experience mercy so that we can experience mercy here are several things that you need to do as I close in order to turn and, and bring mercy on this land, mercy on this I believe country, mercy even upon the, the world even we got to begin to uh, sincerely seek him and, and be saved. We need to repent and give our hearts back to God. We need to repent. Genuine salvation needs to be, if you will applied and sought. We need to sincerely repent and be saved. Not playing, not this play play stuff, not this stuff where uh, yeah, I say I'm saved. They said, no, no, you need to turn your heart completely to God. You need to begin to say, God, whatever uh, is not satisfying 
to you in my life, I, listen, put your finger on it. Uh, show me, oh God. I think the scripture says in the psalm, the Bible says, search me, oh God. Search me and, and, and help me to know. And if there is any evil way in me, God, help me that I might be saved. So we need to begin to seek to be saved and, and turn our hearts back to God. Second thing we need to do is we need to develop a love and a passion for the word of God. The word of God. Number one, seek to be saved. Return to the joy of salvation. Ask God to restore the joy of salvation. And then number two, get in the word. Begin to fall in love with the word again. Read and meditate the word of, on the word of God. Uh, begin to apply the word of God to your everyday life. Then the third thing we need to do is humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves. See, you will never have a prayer life without humbling yourself. The scripture says that if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and it's important, humility is crucial. This involves a recognition that God is the one that we need. When you humble yourself, you basically now are acknowledging, I need God. Pride says, I do not need God. But when you humble yourself, you're saying, I need God. I need to honor God and I need to reverence God. And so we need to humble ourselves. We need humility. And then the fourth thing is we need to, I mean, commit to radical obedience. My God, we need to commit to radical obedience. We just simply need to trust God. Listen, God taught me some things about Abraham. He said that God, God said to me that Abraham could trust me uh, and he knew he could trust me because Abraham obeyed me. He said, if you don't obey me, you'll never know that I can keep my word. I can do for you what only I can do, but you got to trust me that if God tells you to go into a place that you've never been and leave a place that you're familiar with, just trust him. Just trust him. And so we got to, we got to basically commit to radical obedience, radical obedience. We have to be uh, radical. And then the last thing is we got to uh, literally commit to sacrifice once again because in order for us I believe to even walk in radical obedience we must understand that we must become sacrificial we must become sacrificial in other words you got to die to your ways it cannot be your way and his way the Bible says that we are not even to lean to our own understanding but in all of our ways acknowledge him and let him direct let his word direct let his word be a lamp and a light unto your feet Stop doing things your way. Stop using, uh, if you will, rationale and logic to, to basically be your guide and begin to open up and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how and what would you have me to do? What is the direction for my life in this season? And these things, I believe, as we repent and as we bring our hearts back to this particular space where God is first and where God is the center and we have a consciousness uh, uh, of the people around us who are not saved and we want to share the love of God and we want to share the good news of the gospel. I believe that we're going to see God begin to rain down his righteousness and God's going to restore and bring, I believe, the church and the body of Christ back into a place of honor, power, uh, back into a place of true kingdom dominion. Come on, you ought to praise him right there. Listen, there's, you could teach on this subject for the rest of our days, but God is saying repent 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 repentance is so key it's one of the keys to deliverance repent repent deliverance is 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 essential but you'll never even walk in deliverance until you repent and come back in full agreement with God fall in love with him again fall in love with him again fall in love with the word of God again God's getting ready to cause you to fall in love with him again fall in love with him again. I'm going to pray for you. This has been an amazing word. It's been a challenging word. It's been a challenging word. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be challenged. He wants to challenge you to change and to repent and come back into that space where you are truly living your life for God as a good soldier, as a good soldier, that you're seeking him and you're seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Fall in love with God again. Fall in love. Just take a moment and worship him. Just take a moment and worship him. Just take a moment and worship him. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We honor you. We adore you. Fall in love with God. 
Listen, I'm not saying fall in, we, we've fallen in love with what he can do. Fall in love with him. 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 Oh, he's going to do for you because he's faithful. You ain't got to worry about being blessed. You don't have to worry about being blessed. That, that's automatic. God is going to bless you. He's going to keep his word. But begin to develop a passion and a heart for God. Begin to ask God to reveal himself. Show me your glory, Father. Show me your glory. We need God. We need his presence. We need his presence in America. We need his presence in our churches. We need his presence in our cities. We need his presence in our homes. We need his presence. And God, we invite you. We welcome you. We decree and declare that we are your people. We are your people. We are your people. We are the temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. And we invite you to manifest your glory through our lives, through our hearts, through our churches, through our homes. We invite you into our city. We invite you to be God even in this nation, Father. We lift up our hands. We lift up our heart to you. And today, once again, we repent. We turn our hearts back to you. We align with your word and your ways. We decree and declare that you are the truth. You are the way and you are the life. And we worship you today. We give you glory today. We give you honor. Wherever you are, just begin to open your heart. You know, how, how do you repent? You repent by shifting your mind. By shifting your mind. And then when you shift your mind, just allow worship to, be, to begin to flow. See, sometimes we, we open our mouth before we actually turn our heart. Turn your heart and then let your mouth follow your heart. Let your mouth follow your heart. But we turn our heart to you. We, we turn our minds. We thank you. Deliver us, Father. Deliver us. Deliver us. Send deliverance. Free us from everything that causes us to be entangled with the affairs of this life. And yes, we know that we have to be responsible for things. But our heart and our affections are set on things that are above. Teach us to walk in the spirit. Teach us to live in the kingdom of God. That kingdom that sits high above all the kingdoms of this world and this earth. I decree and declare today that as we repent, Father, we repent even today. And we turn our hearts back to you. And we ask that you will begin to open up the heavens and rain down righteousness from heaven. I pray for a spirit of holiness, a spirit of righteousness to be upon the people of God that we are dedicated and committed unto you. I pray that you would bring into our lives, God, the anointing to reach and to win the world for you. I pray that you would grace us with the ability to glorify you in every that we do in our homes in our marriages in our jobs our careers our churches we will lift up the blood-stained banner that Jesus Christ died on the cross that we might have life and have it more abundantly I pray today for the spirit of repentance to be upon this people to be upon this land we pray for repentance even in our nation even in the nation of america i pray that you would bring repentance to the hearts of leaders i pray that you would turn leaders hearts back to you i pray father that you would give us strategies for warfare to deal with principalities and powers that have aligned themselves to even take over areas of of power through politicians and through leaders in business and church and even school systems I pray and I decree and declare that you bring deliverance pray for mercy to be upon even this land and this nation I pray even today father that you would have mercy upon us and that God your mercy will prevail I lift up even today this great nation I lift up today your people God I pray for the saints I pray for the church that father as we turn our hearts back to you that you would set our hearts on fire set us on fire God set us on fire 
set a fire in our heart God God release a fire in people of God that we will be radical and that we will be on fire that we will literally begin to bring and create revival because of the passion of the people of God help us to live right help us to live holy and to live right before you and God release fresh oil upon your people God raise up prophets and raise up apostles and pastors and teachers raise evangelists oh God raise up men and women of God who operate in the gifts of miracles and healing I pray for healing all over this land all over the world we know that you're a God that's able to heal and I believe that even this spirit that has even released fear over the people of God through this COVID spirit I believe that you're restoring and you're delivering and that even on the cross uh, you died God and you shed your blood through Jesus Christ and Jesus was resurrected from that grave. And I believe that the cross of Calvary even has the power to redeem and heal and to deal with the spirit of COVID. I decree and declare today that the blood of Jesus, I believe that the blood of Jesus covers us and that there is yet power in that blood. I lift up the name of Jesus, the only name whereby men can be saved. Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Christ. I lift you up, oh God. It was on Calvary, I believe, that you even nailed to the cross the spirit of COVID. And I decree and declare that you release healing over the land. Heal and deliver. I thank you, oh God, that even the spirit of death that has been released over the land, I decree and declare today as an apostle of the Lord Jesus that God, you will have mercy. Have mercy. And even as the children of Israel applied the blood to the post of their homes when you brought them out of Egypt. We apply the blood of Jesus to our nation. We apply the blood of Jesus over this land and we decree and declare that you are a God of mercy. You are a God of mercy. Have mercy. Let not the plagues of Egypt plague your children. Let 1,000 fall this side and another thousand on that side but let nothing come nigh the dwelling of your children you preserve and keep your children God we lift you up today we decree and declare that you are our God and we are your people have mercy upon us oh God deliver us heal us free save deliver in the name of Jesus is our prayer somebody ought to give him praise rabba Somebody ought to give him praise. We lift up the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus be lifted high. The name of Jesus be lifted high. Let the heavens rain down righteousness. Let the heavens rain Release the glory of God upon the earth. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power. Thank you for miracles, signs and wonders. Be glorified. Be glorified. We love you. We lift you. We thank you. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Mante Raban Sokai. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Our strength is yet in the cross. We thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. It is not by our gifts. It's not our talent that's going to save us. But you are our deliverer. You are our healer. And we lift you, Father. We lift you the name of Jesus be lifted. Listen, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. I pray and speak healing over you today. If there is any sick, any afflicted among us that's even on the broadcast, I release a spirit of healing. The Bible said that Jesus sent his word and it healed. And I send the word of healing. I send the word of encouragement. I speak even today that God is restoring 
even now. I hear the Lord saying that I am a healer and I am a deliverer. And I release the spirit of healing and deliverance even over this broadcast that the Lord will heal you. Those of you who have arthritic pain, healed in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are dealing with hypertension and you're dealing with issues in your blood, healing in the name of Jesus. I release in the name of Jesus those who are having pains in your back, healing in the name of Jesus. I command migraines right now to loose the people of God. Rabbi Soka, I command healing even now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the Lord is restoring you, that even peace is coming to your mind. Some of you who have been overwhelmed and the feeling of being overwhelmed, the Lord says, I'm releasing my peace. I'm releasing my peace. My peace I release unto you. I release peace unto you now in the name of Jesus. That peace that passeth all understanding and that the Lord will begin to even allow the anointing of God to guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you as I pray today. Listen, if you have not, please go and visit our website and, and just go and share uh, so even if you uh, have a seed today you like to sow you can sow through cash app I know that they have even on the broadcast the different ways that you can give we encourage you to give I pray today that the Lord will bless you to be a blessing to the to the church and the work of the Lord I prophesy that the Lord will even bless you as you bring and as you sow and as you seed into the ministry as you give your tithe your offering that the window of heaven be open unto you I prophesy that the Lord will provide for you miraculously that the Lord will bring provision into your life that the Lord will keep and preserve you that your barrel will never be dry that every time you go into your cupboards there will be plenty that every time you open your refrigerator there will be plenty every time you look into the freezer you will never see the bottom that God will provide and supply your every need I prophesy it today that the Lord keep you and grant unto you the riches of his glory in the name of Jesus because of your seed because of your seed listen we want you to know that we are beginning to uh, prepare ourselves to restore uh, physical worship next week we're going to be basically taking and receiving some of the saints if you feel led we invite you to come and be a part of our worship experience God has given us wisdom and we're building strategies. So next Sunday, the first Sunday in September, we will be back in our physical worship. We do want you to know that we are asking that you wear masks and that we remain socially distant. We will learn to practice new ways as we fellowship. We will not be as uh, clingy and as huggy as we probably would love to be, but literally we're going to begin to restore and reestablish ourselves in worship. We do have a limit that we will receive and so hopefully if you're led we certainly welcome you and we welcome you to be a part of our worship experience if you're not comfortable at this point we do respect that and we understand it and we want you to stay tuned right here because we will continue to do our broadcast but we will literally begin to restore our worship experience as the leading of the Lord uh, has basically brought us to this point where we have pretty much uh, begin to build strategy to come back into the house of God so we solicit your prayers remember we do have protocol you will be uh, you know subject to just temperature checks you will have to have a mask on you will have to worship and keep your mask on at all times and uh, we will definitely have sanitary things and items in place to make sure that we continue to keep our hands clean and sanitize and so forth and uh, we will basically just begin to move into restoring our worship experience so we love you we appreciate you thank you for tuning in if you do not have a church home we certainly ask that you consider to be a part of this amazing family the family of God here uh, we just love God we love his word we love each other and we just simply love the body of Christ at large but God is doing an amazing work here at Impact Church he's called us to impact our city and we do that by first of all being a blessing by impacting our own families our own lives but God has called us to do some amazing things in this city we have some amazing works that he's doing through us and he's doing through the ministry we are thankful that the uh, homeless day center or the community day center where we minister to the homeless in our community it is being if you will uh, 
established now where we're uh, not being established, but we, we've been open, but we had to close because of the COVID, but we are basically uh, making preparations to reopen, and so we're excited about that. We invite you to learn more about what we do at the uh, Community Day Center where Pastor Linda Jones, Elder Linda, does an amazing job. She is the director. She ministers directly to the homeless community. We need to help people in our community, and that's one of the ministries that we thank God for. We also have some major major endeavors that God has given to us, and we want you to prepare to sow into as we prepare to build schools, as we prepare to literally uh, establish things that's going to help our community and to bring, if you will, solutions and resolution to the challenges right around us. So please go to our website, learn more about what we're doing. We thank God for the vision here. Our vision is to impact a city. We do that by building a people, by literally building a people and by sowing and giving into the ministry, we're able to create opportunities where we can establish powerful programs, ministries, and entities where we can literally bring solutions to everyday problems of people in our community. So until next week, we love you. We thank God for you. We are in prayer on Wednesday night. And so we certainly thank God that prayer will be also uh, restored. Wednesday night, we'll be back in prayer again, intercessory prayer. And so we ask that you just... Uh, pray with us if you feel led to come out and pray with us remember to wear a mask remember that we are basically continuing to use wisdom as we are continuing to navigate through this season so, but we are we are we are restoring and God is restoring the house of God and the worship and so until Wednesday or Sunday God bless you as I pray.